Basketball coach Craig Neal for our Delta Dental coach's comments. Coach Neal, congratulations, yeah. a victory over the Aggies eight times in a row. Eight times in a row you've won in this building. Yeah, I, just, I, I see. Yeah, it's, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, guys. So it's, it's just one of those things where we've been very fortunate and been able to play well on the road. And, uh, hopefully we'll continue. Uh, guys grew up a lot today and just really proud of them. First question, do we have any information on this? No, we games? don't, and that's, you know, that's, I'm sorry I'm late, but we just got a lot of, we got a lot of moving parts going on. He's, uh, he's getting treated, um, they're checking him out for a neck injury, uh, don't know how severe it is, so, um, I'm either going to stay back, or, uh, I know our doctor's here, and she'll stay back, and then our trainer will stay back, I just got to figure out if I'm going to stay back or not, so we got a lot of moving parts, but that's all I got right now. Uh, your team, uh, they finished this off, and I know that yeah, it's not that easy. That's uh, it's hard seeing your kid go down like that, and you got to put him on a stretcher, and he's he's visibly upset, and it makes you emotionally. You know, I have a hard time with that anyway. I'm I'm somewhat too emotional, and and when I see my players upset, and you know, he's crying, and I'm trying to make sure he knows that he's okay, and he's just got to relax and let the doctors do their job. And um, you know, I think he was he was okay at the end of that, but it, it's just not easy. But you know, I got to give my guys credit. It's just like I told them together. I said, hey, the best thing you can do is try to put it out of your mind. It's not easy to do and play for him and play for yourselves and play for our university and our great fans. And uh, they did that, um, you know, for about the first two minutes when we got going, they were a lot tougher than I was. And, you know, that's what I talked to them about at the end of the game. And that's why I got them together, just just the sense that that was a growing moment that sometimes these young guys don't understand. And you got to realize we don't, we don't have one senior playing over 15 minutes. And I like my group. I like my kids. That's why I recruit them. Uh, you know, I'm really, really proud of the three guys that set out that I think they've understood the importance of what we do on scouting reports and what we do. And that's why I think you saw the way they uh, played an exhibition season and let people score against them. And we didn't do very good. I mean, we didn't do very good the first half defensively, but I thought we needed to get stops. We got stops, and I think they showed some toughness. And then, you know, I, I'm really happy for Elijah because – you know, I don't think that people know what kind of special player he is, and I've always known that. I'm just thankful his dad uh, gave me the opportunity to coach him, and, and he's going. Him and I are going to have some growing pains because he's like a son. Because I've known him for so long, and they're all my sons. But um, you know, and then Sam hits two big shots, and we make two great plays and great passes, and uh, he stayed with it, and just showed great toughness, and made two big shots. Coach, we talk about the adversity. Uh, Devin going down mm -hmm. and, the, and the team being very emotional and after sitting out for 14 minutes, coming back right. into the game, right. getting refocused, dialed back in, um, and then fighting through the foul situation. Yeah, I mean, you guys were able to adjust. And right. I, th I think, you know, the big thing, Hunter, and I'm sorry I'm not as excited as I should be. I'm just a little somber, but uh, worry about what's going on. But the thing that's most impressive, the minutes we got out Joe Firstinger, the minutes we got out Nick, the minutes we got out Dane, the minutes we got out Jordan Hunter, guys that you know were thrown in there because of foul trouble. And we got to figure out the rules, and we got to do a better job not using our hands and moving our feet and bumping people. And you know we got to figure out the arm bar when to get the other hand off of them. And there's a lot of things that we have to adjust to, and that's my responsibility. We've worked on it. We just, uh, I just like that we're being physical. Yeah. That, because, you know, Hunter, we've always talked about yeah. that, the toughness and physicality. And, you know, we haven't always done that. We didn't, you know, we struggle with it. And uh, when Cam and those guys left, they, had, they were really, really physical. And Drew Gordon and I think Tim Williams can be really physical. He's just got foul trouble. He's got to figure out he's going to move his feet. And it's a different level. You think the refs are calling those calls? Early in the season, because it's early in the I season. I think they're going to do it all year. Uh, I hope they do that. I think what happened last year, we tried to do that, and then by the time conference plays come, and then it was just like, well, what happened to the? Are we aren't we doing that, or are we doing it? But I think there's a, a concerted effort that that's what they're going to do, and I'm fine with it, and we'll adjust. But you know, I thought we'd persevere for yeah. some major foul trouble. Yeah, you and did. I mean, some you, things. You played 13 players. Tonight. Played 13 players, and that's not always going to happen. But the way I look at it, Hunter, um, you know, I told you guys, and it's you know, I don't mind sharing because I'm, I'm honest about how I feel things, but nobody's really made a big push that those are minutes that they deserve. So if I give a guy a shot the first half and he really doesn't, he plays, you know, six, seven, eight, and he doesn't give me anything offensively or defensively, 
I kind of feel obligated. I got to give another guy a look and and see if they if they're going to give me a shot in the arm. And I think I got lucky and I made a decision to throw Jordan out there. And he made a shot yeah. because he can do that and he's electrifying and he's going to be a heck of a player for us. But I just had a gut feeling that he was going to make a play, and that's that's one thing at a coach. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, you know, at one time I had three freshmen out there, and yeah. my coach he kept set going to me. Are you all right? Are you are you serious? I mean, you got a lot of. I mean, really? You got three freshmen out there with 11 minutes to go in the game. I said, hey, they got to figure it out sometime. Well, we picked him as a sub of the game. Out of all the subs, we picked Jordan Hunter because of his demeanor in four yeah, minutes. He, he came out as a freshman in a hospital. Guarded. He guarded. He didn't turn it over. He hit a big three. Um, you know, I had confidence that he's going to run the show, and he's just got to get better and better. But he's learned the system. He's just got to play with a better motor. It's not like high school where you can come in and you're the guy and you can kind of go through it and get going. He's got to come in and use his quickness, his athletic ability, his explosiveness right from the get-go. Now, if he does that, he gives us a different dimension because he's a guy that's that's you know, a lot like Tim Jacobs, but, you know, Tim struggles to make baskets. And Jordan comes in and gives us a dimension where you have to play him. And uh, that was really helpful tonight. From your perspective, Elijah Brown's 31 points, a new personal career high for him. And his, his college career, 19, was his previous best. Um, so many good things tonight. Right. But why was he able to get his shots and, and be so efficient with them? Well, I, I just don't realize, I don't think they realized how good he was. And I think once he got going and they let him get going, then he got in a rhythm, then he's able to drive it, and he's got fouled. I mean, when you can go to the line uh, 13 or 14 times and you can get to the line like that and you're going you're gonna to make all of them, you're going to score a bunch of points, and that's what we try to do. We try to get to the line, and uh, we got to the line 23 times a night. If we can get to the line between 20 and uh, 30 times a game, we're going to beat a lot of people just because we can make foul shots now. I know it's a tough night, Coach Jones. You might be standing here. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I just it's it's one of those things. that's not not a lot of fun. I just want to make sure my guys. I just want to make my make sure my guys okay. And you know, it's it's tough because you need to be with your team. And we got a quick one uh, turnaround on Wednesday. And you know, it's been a great weekend for all Lobos and uh, the city of Albuquerque. So you know, I'm just glad we can finish it off. Well, we're all concerned about that. Yeah, I know we are, and that's yeah. and I know it's it's tough, but we got to celebrate the win and we got to be happy and we are happy but you know we just got to figure out if he's okay and what what the status is and I got to get a hold of his parents and make sure um, they know what's going on so I'm gonna have to make a decision it's tough because I want to stay but then I have to take care of my team because we got one coming up but we got a great trainer uh, Cody can stay back and then we are doctors with him, so I just want to make sure everything's straight so that's why I'm a little bit late we have a lot of moving parts you mentioned the quick turnaround you play a Friday right. a Sunday and now you've got the Wednesday the Missouri Valley Challenge with the Mountain right. West you've got Loyal, Loyal, and they're good. Porter does a good job. Uh, known him for a long time. He was, matter of fact, he was with Chris and uh, Rencher at St. Louis, staff with Majerus. So uh, we're familiar with them. But it's anytime uh, you play a Missouri Valley team, it's it's a good challenge, and, and they're a really nice team. And they got a ch- chance to finish in the top three or four in that conference and maybe have a chance to win it. But it'll be a tough challenge for us. Um, but then again, um, we're at home. And um, you know, it's just like I told our guys, we got we got to get back to uh, protecting our neighborhood, and um, we're figuring that out. And I think they realize how important it is. And you know, our fans are second to none, so I, I think we'll have a great crowd on Wednesday because uh, we need them. This group needs them. This group feeds off them. Uh, one thing that you guys have noticed because you've been to practice, this is an emotional group. I mean, there's we got some emotional group. We got an emotional group uh, that loves to play. They don't back down. Um, they feed off each other. Um, but it's a unique group in the sense that they're that passionate about what they do, and uh, that's why I love them so much. It's yeah, fun. I would say not only the players, but the coaches. <laughs> I saw you and Harry been going at it. On the no, side. I just told. I told. I said. <laughs> I, I know what I'm doing when I didn't get out of the box, but Hunter, you know this, and I told Harry, Harry and I are close, he lived with me for two months, but anytime somebody grabs you from behind, it's not, he was just trying to keep you in the game, he was just in the game, just grab my one. Thanks a lot, Coach. No worries. Thanks. Delta Dental Coach's comments brought to you by Delta Dental of New Mexico. Lobo head men's basketball coach, Craig Deal.
Delta Dental, almost 400,000 New Mexicans covered by Delta Dental plans. More info, log on to deltadentalnm.com. Our last time out, on the other side of the break, we wrap it up.